Kelly Show. That's working and oh, we end up framing the shot. And, oh, 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 here we go. Content I, warning. You know, I swear to you. Spoiler alert. I think, I think both of them might be going off. Uh, they, they might. All right, here we go. Uh, content warning, spoiler alert. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to a haphazard, last minute, getting together with an old friend edition of the Tom Kelly Show. Jeanette, describe the situation as I rush to get my laptop. It's been horrifying. I came in, we just began to speak, and all of a sudden, an unholy, ungodly beep comes into the night, although it's afternoon. Oh, see, hear it? It's a smoke alarm. I, I, they, honest, to, they, these shouldn't even exist. They should make them change color when the batteries go. The, it, the, they, yeah, they're torturing people. And and you can never find... There's two smoke alarms in here. One he can find, and there's one 45 feet high in your ceiling. Your ceilings are very high. Okay, here. so now we're getting into the thing of... So the nice thing about my New York City apartment is... Uh, by the way, you're experiencing the Tom Kelly show. A uh, show where... Uh, the podcast where one comedian, Tom Kelly, gets back to having fun. Oh, is this? Is, we may be safe. Actually, we might be safe on this. So... I haven't had guests over in a while. I've had my nephew, Nico, but he doesn't count. He, he's family. Uh, I, I haven't seen Jeanette in forever. I invite her up to my apartment because, you know, here we could not spend money and I don't have to breathe in her cats. And, <laughs> and yeah, long, this is just the ultimate New York experience. The one perk of this apartment is I have 16-foot high ceilings. And, yep. Oh, God. Okay, but I think we're safe on this. No, in I that, think that one is going too. He also okay, has so, up. Oh, I just pulled the battery on it. Folks, we might be safe. There are two fire alarms, one 16 feet in the air and one uh, that hand. I can reach. And then this one that we just pulled down in my hand. I thought it was the one way up in the sky because I'm like, we haven't changed the batteries on this one in a while. I'll bet you they're both going. And to get the ladder uh, to reach the ceiling is you have to email or call the super who is a nice man. Who doesn't live in the building? He doesn't live in the building. He manages a few different buildings. And the way I describe Reyes is, uh, oops, I said his name, but he doesn't listen to the show. Have you ever met someone who doesn't speak the same language as you? And then you talk to them for a bit and you realize even if you spoke the same language, they just would be an a-hole and an idiot anyway? Oh, that's the super I had when I first moved into my apartment 46 years ago. Okay, so my story from 15 years ago with uh, this landlord. By the way, Jeanette Barber, uh, my friend, mentor, legendary comedian, uh, radio personality. Look her up. You'll know why she's important. Um, 15 years ago, I messaged Ray as the landlord. There was a problem with the toilet and a problem with the smoke detector. Could you come while I'm at work and fix things up? And I had just moved to the building, right? Uh, I see him on the way out of the building as I'm coming in. And he's like, hey, just so you know, I was fixing the toilet. By the way, I'm going to get canceled for that impersonation. I'm going to stop now. Yeah, he but he's like, hey, anymore. just so you know, I was fixing your toilet. And uh, I found the jewelry you had in the toilet. And uh, I'm an honest guy. I just left it uh, on your kitchen table. So I reach into my pocket. I tip him 50 bucks. Uh, I knew who lived in the apartment before me. And I'm like, I'm going to make sure they get their jewelry back. Oh, because I was going to say, uh, first of all, I rarely store things in my toilet. Uh, uh, um, apparently, that's a New York City move. People the, hide in the really? tank. Really? Yeah, in the tank. Oh, I don't have a tank. You put it in a Ziploc bag and you put it on the back of the toilet. So anyway, I now come into the apartment and I look on the kitchen table. There's no jewelry. I look on the living room table. There's no jewelry. And I'm like, where the hell did he put it? I checked the kitchen, no jewelry. And then I look up and the smoke detector's still broken. And I go to the bathroom, the toilet's still broken. And the guy spent two hours fixing the wrong apartment. And that's oh. my relationship with Reyes, the handyman. Oh. Uh, and so now, years ago, they used to have a ladder downstairs, but now the ladder moves between three or four different buildings. Um, and like I have light bulbs that are just a little bit too bright in the hallway. They are a little bright. But I want them, but they're not, yeah, they, but they're either too dim or too bright. I know, I think I can get a tan now. Uh, yeah, they're tanning. We'll show them later. Yeah. So anyway, and I'm like, geez, the smoke alarm, I was just thinking last night too. Gosh, I haven't had to change the batteries in the smoke detector in a while. I think this is a smoke detector and one's a carbon monoxide detector, whatever it is. Oh. I think we're safe for the podcast, oh, this though. this is the smoke detector and that's carbon monoxide. I've removed both so that I can just die a painful death. See, because and I that's my argument. That See, that's my argument with you is right. you're not going to die. You're going to live and be burned and mm -hmm. then I'm going to be the only loved one who visits you. 
and I'm going to have to visit not just a depressed old lady, but a scabbed, burned up old lady. First of all, I'm not depressed. I will be scabbed and I will be burned. And if this is what I have to do so that we can see each other more often, <laughs> I will do whatever I, I have to do. I'm just saying, do. Jeanette, you, the, the, <laughs> you guys don't know what it's like to work with Jeanette uh, before you hit the record button. Uh, I don't know. How's my hair? I don't know. How's my hair? Could you imagine if you're all scabby on top of that? Oh, it wouldn't be good. You know, Jeanette's saying, nah, I don't know. I don't know well, if I, I should be on camera. The gym. It's still glued. Okay, fine. But you just see, get what I'm saying there. Yeah. Just That's what she says when she looks gorgeous. Just imagine after she's a burn victim. And don't get me wrong, burn victims are beautiful too. I feel like we have to say that. We nowadays. are, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm probably not only burning uh, on the lower uh, part of my body and you won't have to see that. So you're welcome. There is nothing worse than a rhythmic, repetitive sound. My super is the best. Okay. Uh, his name is Mike. And I, like, if you have to have something done that doesn't need to be done right away, he gets to it. He's got 120 apartments, this, this wonderful man who I absolutely actively love, not in a creepy way. Okay. Um, but, well, he fixes things, not in a creepy oh, way. Not, you're not a little turned on by it. He fixes your, he, he fixes your toilet. Well, I'm, I'm not really... Uh, no, I'm not turned on by that. See, this is the difference between a man and a woman. Right. See, men think everything is a turn on. Women just love like gentle creatures as we are. Okay, nobody's going to fall for that. Point is, uh, he's the best guy I've ever met. I, I have a gross story. Do you want to hear it? About Why not? We're on, we're on the air. Why not? So, uh, first, <clears throat> colonoscopy. Maybe I don't. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, keep You're, going. Yeah, you can always take we're it We're here. Out. So, uh, you know, you, 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 have you had one? I had my first one uh, last year, and uh, I found out that I am cancer-free, and mm -hmm. I have hemorrhoids. Ah, see? Yeah. Now you've joined but, everyone but else. But now I know why I'm... Ir like, it's funny. It's one of those things where every now and... Every couple of months, there'd be like a... Like, a, this is my hemorrhoid noise. I've made it on the podcast before, where in the middle of the night, I'll just be like... <laughs> like, that's how I feel on the inside. And God bless... Uh, yeah, and now I know what that is. Yeah, now the I'm older you get, the more of these little illnesses you collect. And the point is, and this is what I say to the doctors every time, will that kill me? Oh, all right. So okay. if, if I'm not going to die, I don't care. I love a colonoscopy. I love it. I would wish he would do it more often um, because it's- You love the drugs. You don't love the colonoscopy. No, I don't like the drugs at all. What I like is that it's the one day a year that it's easy not to eat anything because you have to fast for the day, you have no back door, you must do it, there's no option, so it becomes easy. And you always lose three pounds and your stomach gets really flat. I would make it a new hobby, but the so it's funny. Won't I need to lose weight by Monday because, and and, and we're we're screwed. My blood pressure was up high. I gained weight over the winter, uh, and my doctor, who I like to jokingly call Doctor Fox News, uh, he said, "Hey Tom, you know your blood pressure is at the raised a medicine level. I'll give you three. I'll give you six weeks." And I started dieting five weeks and three days in. You know, I've been traveling. It's been, uh -huh. I, I don't want to get into it. I'm going to lose weight this summer. It's just a cycle of me. Yes. It's just my body. I'm going. Are you working out? No. I, and with that, that, we'll get to that life advice in a minute, yeah. actually. It's, because I, it's funny. I invite Jeanette on when I have life problems. And Jeanette, what's nice about having her on is she'll give you something sage. And then I could just play the tape back again a few times if I don't digest it the first time. You watch. This will be the one time I'm the most boring thing on earth. But I don't know. We'll uh, make an you, effort. You've already led with colonoscopy. Uh -huh. It's hard to go oh, downhill from here. Let me just tell you that story. Story. Um, So it's my first colonoscopy. And, you know, you drink the fluid. And we all know what's supposed to happen. So I'm thinking, uh, and, and I say to Eleanor, which is what I call my ex, uh, because he now looks like Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, well, actually, he looks worse than that now. Not the point. Um, we, and, we're not shaming Eleanor Roosevelt, no. but we are shaming Jeanette's ex. Yeah, my ex. But anyway, uh, so I tell Eleanor, I'm drinking the fluid now. Because at that point, we we're living together. Um, and uh, he goes, okay. And he goes into the bathroom and um, clogs it. And he comes out. Oh, and, no. I mean, he goes, oh. As you're about to. Yeah, I, I, I've already drunk the stuff. And I've never done this before. But I think that uh, all, I, I think explosions are, are imminent. And, and then he's trying to fix it. And, and he's not. And I said, I'm calling Mike. He said, no. I said. I am not waiting because it's going to happen any minute. I get a bucket out. I'm no, so no, that did not happen. Did not happen. Okay. Um, uh, but I but I text Mike and I, and I say Mike colonoscopy. He said that it's clogged. Um, he was there in three minutes um, and uh, fixed it. Meanwhile, right, didn't kick in till four a.m. Yeah, see that thing takes a little. Sometimes it takes a little bit. 
Um, but see. it was horrifying. And how great is my super, um, Mike? I love him. Um, so. Yeah, and then and again, this is the magic of a New York City apartment. I just texted Reyes, the handyman. And again, this is a 16-foot ladder, a pain in the ass to carry up. And he goes, in an hour, they will leave it in the lobby. You pick it up there and leave it there. Mike. Mike would have responded immediately. Mike would be at the door. Um, Because that's happened. Because uh, in the hallway of my building, uh, hellish thing going off. And I just say, Mike, repetitive beep. I can't. I can't. And I'm not, I'm not a problem uh, 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 unless I've taken colonoscopy fluid or there's a beep. Um, and right there. So now I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, how you have, can get into my building. We have two big life problems here. Okay. Do, do I change the light bulbs in the main hallway? Too bright? Yes? Yes. Okay. I have to find the right shade of light bulb. Do I put in, I have eat the light bulbs in the main room uh-huh. that change colors above me. Okay. They are roughly 50 bucks a pop. They're one of those internet light bulbs. Uh-huh. I could put those in the hallway and make it that. Okay, I, we'll, we'll discuss a my lighting scheme later. Light. A I mean, soft light. Yeah, I really the, hate that bright white yeah. like, like he's got. Um, you know what it is? I like it being that bright white when I walk in, and then I'd like to dim it now. Do you have a dimmer? No. Oh, what you need is a dimmer switch. You know what I would handle that? I would call Mike and I would say, <laughs> Mike, I need a dimmer switch. And then he comes and does it. Uh, I, I'm more into the idea of calling Reyes the handyman who will be like, I will leave you a box of tools. <laughs> yeah, somewhere downstairs. I don't know how you're going to change and those. And directions in Spanish. Uh, I'll, I've gotten it in before, but I was also 15 years younger and uh-huh. healthier. Uh, you're, and you're not going to get any age points with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm realizing that. But you are in better shape than me. Uh, At 70. Okay, now. You need, well, that's all. All I'm just going to say is two words, Joe. But go ahead. That's my trainer. Okay, yeah, but I, that, well, th- that leads into what we're talking about. So okay. I've had my foot out the door for New York City for about five years. I know. Every time I'm about to leave, I get like a week of hope. And I think the best way to share this moment of hope is to actually show you the video. This is the weirdest thing ever. This is from my Instagram and my brother, Sal. I met these people while walking in Malibu State Park in California and I was with my brother, we did the MASH hiking trail, and now I'm in Central Park and just bumped into them. I did not do this on purpose. I honestly only recognize them because of Paul's mustache there. Uh, I've only seen a few of those. That's like the Mark Maron mustache. And yeah, so now the the weird moment of, am I meant to become millionaires with them, or are they stalking me? We'll figure that out in a minute. It's both. It's both. Oh my God. And that's a real moment. How cool is that? It was cool. Uh, and, and I guess this is, I was going to, before the beeping, I was going to ease you into that as a topic. Uh-huh. Uh, and the topic was going to be your New York City magic moments. And for me, oh. I was cranky that morning. Uh, I, uh, I have a friend who's been on the show, Caitlin O'Connor. Uh, she was telling me I should start doing I am affirmations. Have you heard that? I am, like you listen to a tape and it's like, I am funny. I am a successful uh-huh. comedian. I, when I am grateful, more right. things happen to me to make me grateful. And I was listening with one earbud in, walking in Central Park in the sun because I felt like going to the gym was just another inside place and I was not going to get my vitamin D. And literally, I looked up and saw these people. And I had an hour and a half to two hours to kill. And I'm like, all right, I am meant to show these guys around Central Park. And I think at least the male in the relationship was definitely a little weirded out by the coincidence. Like, because we met them out in Malibu State Park. And I followed uh, him on Facebook or Instagram. Turns out he's an Australian TV star, but I have many more followers than he does on Instagram. But I think it's just America's bigger. Um, Anyway, yeah, I'm like, all right, we're met. And she, I work for iHeartRadio at night, uh, and she works for iHeartRadio in Australia. Oh, wow. Which, actually, if you do the time difference, when I'm working at night, she's working during the day in Australia, so we're technically co-workers. And, yeah. And, and you might have an in if you want to relocate. But what was just- but they fu- have spiders. <laughs> Oh, God. And then, yeah, so I thought I had this real New York, I'm meant to hang out with these guys moment. I invited them to my show tonight. We'll see if they show up. Uh, And then right there, when I'm in the glow of, I have to stay in New York City. This is it. I'm meant to be here. An hour later, I got a email from the landlord saying the rent will be going up $250 a month next year. 
Well. And now I'm back to being, I need to buy a house. I need to buy something on Long Island. I need, you know, I don't know. Anyway, that's the cycle. I guess the first question is, do you have any random New York City moment of hope stories? And I'm realizing- well, See, I'm, I have no despair about uh, New York. I, I love this place, even though it's it's getting, some, some of it's a little skankier um, than it was, uh, but I really love it. But uh, so not like that. Uh, I'm sure I've had them, but uh, I'm 70. If he wants me to remember something, I need warning. Yeah, but, but then the fire alarm came up with can, the warning. What can we do? But uh, uh, one thing that, uh, that I think is really cool is uh, oh, a couple years ago, uh, I'm on Columbus Avenue, and uh, I go by a street guy. And I, I love the homeless street guys. Okay, street guy. I like that yeah. word. You make it sound catchy. Yeah, the ones that I like. You know, sometimes you just feel like, ugh, no. But some of them you're just drawn to. Well, this guy was so adorable. I, I was wearing this hat that, you know, the hat, no one cares. Um, but he, was, he wanted to tell me that his brother used to have a hat just like that. And his brother would use um, a, uh, a old plastic bags and line it to make it stand up. Um, and he was just so cute and so charming. Oh, and I gave him money. It's thank you kindly. He's so cute. And then we stayed and we talked because I, I talked to a lot of street guys. I have no friends. No. I like them. And uh, but, that's, but also no friend thing is mostly of our own choosing. Well, yeah, because, you know, people. But uh, I, so he's adorable. But then he, he's telling me a story because uh, he always lived in the Bronx. And then his mother died. Um, and he, he, him and his mother and his brother lived in the house. Um, but. The mother left the, uh, the house in the brother's name, and the brother threw him out. Or they had a big fight, and he left because he was bright. So now, um, now he's on the street. And I just thought, oh, I love this little guy. He's so cute. Um, and uh, then I didn't see him for a year. Then I run into him outside of CVS. His name is Edwin. And I just that is love That's him. a rich guy name for yeah. a street guy. But he, he was, he's totally a street guy. He was a, uh, he's a vet. Uh, he was in Vietnam. Was um, he, though? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, now I know him quite well. Uh, because, uh, and he had no money. Uh, I had no money. I was just coming out. I just had a credit card. I asked him if he would wait for me. So uh, since I made him wait, I gave him 20. I used to give him a dollar. But um, I... And then, and then I saw him again. Then I'm walking up the street with uh, George one night, and I hear, Jeanette! And it's Edwin, and we hug. Oh. I'm so excited to see him. Then uh, for a while, I, was, I have to take the same walk every uh, Wednesday due to um, my osteoporosis, because <laughs> I go to Osteo Strong. Um, and so then for a while, Edwin and I were meeting on uh, Wednesdays. Um, he's not homeless, uh, but he's, you know, he's helped uh, by, you know, whatever it is. Okay, so he has people. help. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he has a home. It's a remodeled garage and there's drafts, but he sleeps in a hat and socks. Um, to me, those are magic uh, moments because you meet people that, that have had such a different life. And uh, there's, there's this, uh, I, I also went, this is going to sound like a change of subject, but I also got to go to a Coast Guard uh, change of command. Uh, cool. Where? Yeah. Uh, it, it was done at the Richard Rogers Theater because Hamilton, uh, the actual Hamilton, the guy, uh, founded uh, the Coast Guard. And uh, they were- By the way, you don't, we don't call him Alexander Hamilton. We just call him actual Hamilton. Actual Hamilton. <laughs> uh, but I, I, and so they were, they were changing. They call it Sector New York. I felt like I was, you know, yeah. in a dystopian movie, but um, it was very moving. Um, and uh, the, the, the commander, whatever you call it, captain, uh, was being replaced by a different one. And she uh, was uh, is the first- woman of color to make flag rank it was really okay. really cool but uh and it takes a couple hours not boring at all and you see a room and all these these uh coast guard people and i'm looking at all these people and it's like they were all born in in the same world and everybody has a different path and everybody has a different interest and everybody's everybody's lives take them somewhere else and that's what i see with edwin that's what i see there that's what i see in new york um i think it's i i I like New York even better than Paris, and I'll deny that if you say I said it, but I do. Okay. Well, you just hit like 90 notes in that last sentence. My shrink just had a great line. Uh, it, the purpose of life is the purpose you give it. Ooh, yeah. Or I know even better. It was, I, I wrote it down. The purpose of life is the purpose you give yours. Yeah, I yep. mean, it's, yeah, or your yep. purpose is the purpose you give it. The word purpose and you were in the sentence a lot, but I think I'm hitting it in yeah. three different ways. Uh, yeah, I can't just figure, you know, it's just one of those things where uh, it's the recurring uh, sentence of, you know, you're trying to figure out, I don't want to stay, like I'm one phone call away from being a billionaire again. 
Uh, you know, but I, I'm really, I'm the number two guy on four different TV shows for warm up. It's so exciting. It is. I if mean, you we're haven't just seen him do warm up, I'm telling you, he's the best. Yeah, and, and we're really just waiting to see which one, <laughs> which one of these guys will die. Oh, folks, you know what? Since nobody actually listens to this podcast, wait, I can put this up. Uh, we are, I'm at the late show, May 15th. Go get your tickets for that one. Yay. Uh, yeah, get the tickets at the late show on May 15th. But you get at this point though, too, of like, I've had comedic success out in Nassau County this year. We haven't had our real catch-up chat which we'll have since we're at the the, yeah anyway i am looking for direction i'm looking for matt and what was nice about bumping into that couple was you know i felt the magic of new york and and like right before that i saw a three kids who i've seen they're troublemakers in the neighborhood three kids on city bikes shoplift flowers from the fairway at 35 miles an hour. They actually yeah. should have an action movie made about these kids. You know, I saw five kids in a restaurant shack outside mm-hmm. playing music and smoking big smoky blunts right before school. You know, like, and like, oh, that's depressing. This isn't good for those kids. I wasn't even mad about the neighborhood. I was, I genuinely right. felt sad about the kids because I'm like, where are they going to go in life? Uh, you know, but, but then you have one moment like that, that brings your hope back. Well, stark contrast. Another one I was walking, speaking of Osteo Strong, I was walking down the street and, uh, coming out of, I think fairway was a very old woman, uh, carrying two bags and, uh, and she was like at my shoulder and I'm only five, three. Um, and she said, can you help me? Um, and I took her bags and then she took her wallet. Yeah, she had a lot of money no, no, and well, her well, jewels. <laughs> um, and uh, I got to walk with this lovely, uh, and she was really cool and sweet. Uh, all of her friends were dead, um, but she still came. She lived on the east side, always came over to Fairway. I hate that store, but she loves it. And uh, I walked her down, and she was going to take the bags to go to the bus stop. I'll walk you to the bus stop. And we had just a wonderful time. I'll never see her again, but a beautiful moment with another person that lived a completely different life than me. New York is magic. I guess the world is magic if you look at it that way. I just said that. I need an aspirin. Yeah, well, okay. You know what? And I, I don't know if we're going to end a higher... Oh, oh um, but your, your therapist said, life has the meaning you give it. You're looking for direction. Uh, your life has the direction you give it. You're looking for life to give you direction. You are the one that has to do it. That's my sage advice. That's a, You know what? There's a note to end on. All right, folks, listen. Show love where love can be shown. I had a whole list of people I wanted to give shout outs to. Oh, Magic Mirror to Tegan Higginbottom. That was the Australian woman I met. Oh, cool. And Paul Vanner. I, I, I had his name written down. Do I have it easy? Paul Van Hoveren is the guy with the mustache. And a quick Magic Mirror to Melly Mel, who says hi on Instagram. This will be our test to see if she listens to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, listen, show love where love can be shown. New things on Instagram, uh, three to four days a week. Any chance you get to share something I do on Instagram in your stories or tell someone about this podcast does make a difference in my numbers and my satisfaction. And Jeanette will be back again. Maybe we'll do a second show now that we've fixed the uh, fire alarms. <laughs> it's Go- nice to see you. Good night, New York. <laughs>